The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Welcome everyone to our daily doctrinal Bible study of the Vic Malbidu Evangelistic Ministry. And so, without much ado, let us go right away to our preparation for the study of the Word of God. If we have uh, personal sins in our life, we have to be sure that we name them, acknowledge them, admit, confess all of them directly to God the Father, because this is the process <clears throat> of being filled by God the Holy Spirit and having fellowship with God and ready to take in God's Word. For you, unbeliever, it is faith alone in Christ alone. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Okay, so we are going to start our discussion today, our uh, doctrine to uh, take up, and uh, it's presume you are ready. Therefore, let us get started. First of all, we're going to study one of the most important doctrines that every believer needs to learn to believe and to apply in his life. We are going to study the principles and the very reasons why Bible doctrine is so indispensable to every believer in Christ. Undoubtedly, based on the Word of God, time is almost up or time is running out. Perhaps it's going to be real soon, or perhaps it would still be very far. Yes, it may be pretty soon, or it may be pretty far. Not a single one of us knows it. That is why I'm using these words to rightly describe the uncertainty of the time, the very time when it is up, or when time is up. But one thing is going to happen. And it is absolutely certain that it's going to happen because the Word of God says so. You may believe it or not, but it is definitely going to happen. And that incident, sure incident, is what is being mentioned there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. Now, if you have a Bible and you haven't memorized these verses yet, please open your Bible to the text. First Thessalonians 4.16 says, For the Lord himself shall come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Verse 17, after that, we who are still alive and are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so, we will be with the Lord forever. Now, did you clearly understand what's going to happen? Have you been clarified with what's actually going to occur? As what verses 16 and 17 are trying to point out here? Yes, there is going to occur in this world, which none of us knows when. There is going to happen, sure thing to happen. That's why we said it may be pretty soon or it may be yet too far. It may be in a few minutes or hours from now. It may be a hundred more years or a thousand more years or it may occur a few seconds from the time you are listening to this study. But one thing is very sure, it's going to happen. That there is going to be a definite time when our Lord Jesus Christ will come down from heaven. Oh, by the way, what we are talking here about is not the second coming, okay? As our Lord Jesus Christ comes down from heaven, 
all the dead in Christ. Now, dead in Christ in verse 16 means the people who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. In other words, all believers in Christ who are dead, all the dead in Christ at this time are going to rise first. And then those believers who will still be alive at the time are going to join them in meeting the Lord in the air. In other words, all the living and the dead in Christ are going to have a grand, really grand reunion in meeting the Lord in the clouds, in the air. Indeed, what a grand reunion would that be? And that is what the Word of God is saying. Whether you believe this or not, it is lucidly stated there in the Word of God. Your unbelief to it can and would never be or never ever change the veracity of it. Do you know why? It's because God always keeps His Word. Now this very incident which is going to take place and is surely going to happen according to 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17 is what others or what is otherwise known as the resurrection of the church. The other name is the rapture. Now let us clarify again what the word church here means. When the Word of God talks about church, it does not mean this church building used as church. It means every believer in Christ, every person who has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior is a church. The word church, by the way, was taken from the original Greek word ecclesia, which, when translated into Spanish, is iglesia, and into English as church. But the Greek word ecclesia, where our English word church came from, does not mean a building with walls and rooftops on it, no. It means the called out ones. That is what it means by the word ecclesia or church. Now, what's the other name for called out ones? It is believers. This time, we're going to find out that what is being talked about in 1 Thessalonians 4 is the resurrection of the church. And you already know what it means by the word church, okay? Now, if I ask you, when was the church born? Well, it was born on Pentecost, and the Bible was not yet complete, so we call it pre-canon period. Therefore, it was here that the age of the church began, and this age is going to terminate when the rapture or the resurrection of the church occurs. So the technical and theological title of the resurrection of the church is rapture. Now in what we read in verse 17 of our text, if you notice in that verse it says, we'll be caught up together with them in the clouds. So the word for rapture in this particular verse is caught up, will be caught up. There will be time that all believers are going to be caught up or raptured. That's according to what verse 17 is saying. All believers, living and dead believers, are going to be removed from the face of the earth on that eventful day called the rapture. And that's what the Word of God is telling us. We are not making a story out of it. This is not our own making. It is God's making, perfect making. Okay, now we're going to study God's Word particularly about the ages or periods in so far as man's history is concerned. We're going to learn that they have been divided and subdivided into various ages and, or periods, and we call this technically as dispensations. Now, <clears throat> these so-called ages would all depend on who are God's people that He designated to take some responsibilities within those ages. For instance, in the Old Testament, we learned that there were two periods or ages there. 
Now, in the New Testament, there are three periods or ages. And the period or age that we are so concerned about in our current study is the age of the church. This age is the very age or dispensation wherein you, as a believer, if you are a believer while you are hearing this, are part of it, or you are living in this very age. The age of the church started at that very moment Christ sent down the Holy Spirit after he went up to heaven. <clears throat> Christ sent the Holy Spirit to this world. Also the very moment the Holy Spirit indwells every believer's body. This is the very incident that the age of the church all started. Yes, the age of the church. At this very age, the age where you and I as believers are part of, this age of ours is going to cease to exist. It's going to be terminated on that event according to what we read here in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. That is the resurrection of the church or rapture. So while we're studying this doctrine right at this moment, not a single one of us knows when rapture is going to occur. No one knows. No, not one knows the exact time when this momentous event is going to happen in the history of man, particularly in the history of believers. No one knows, not even Christ. It's only God the Father who knows exactly when it's going to happen. We will continue this study tomorrow. So, be sure to be with us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this opportunity of studying our word about the resurrection of the church, the rapture. We thank you for this all, for and in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.